Greetings, everyone. It's your first video with your favorite teacher, of course, Mrs. Morfett. So today we're going to take a look at describing key features of graphs. Now, as you get ready to watch this video, make sure that you have your notebook, a writing utensil, the foldable that I handed out to you so that you can fill it out. It'll make it a lot easier. And maybe some colors would be helpful, too, just to identify key features. Our learning targets in this section is that we want to make sure you can determine where local maximum and minimums are on the graph. We want you to be able to determine where a graph is increasing or decreasing and state those intervals. And we want you to be able to find the x and y intercepts of that graph. Here's the foldable that you have available to you. You want to do the following. You want to cut along where I have the red lines, and you want to fold along where I have the green lines. The goal is so that it looks like this. It'll be a little book so that you can just flip open. So if you have a question about increasing and decreasing intervals, you can just pop that open for the notes. So take some time to cut along those lines and fold along those lines. Alrighty, let's open up and fill out our foldable. Here's where colors might be helpful so that the information in the blanks coincides with the information on the graph. Take a look at the top left corner. Let's fill in the first blank. The blank is the point where the graph crosses the x-axis. So take a look at your x-axis. It's always the horizontal axis. This should be an automatic piece of information that you know now. And we're looking at the points where the graph crosses the x-axis. And you've used this term before, and that's called the x-intercept. So in this case, we have an intercept, x-intercept at negative 3, 0, 1, 0, and 5, 0. So you'll notice that each of those has a number followed by the value of 0. That'll always happen for the x-intercept because it'll always be on the x-axis. This leads us to our next blank. The blank is the point where the graph crosses the y-axis. So of course, that's going to be the opposite. We're going to have y-intercept. So in this case, we want to look at the y-axis and see where it crosses. And on this particular graph, we cross at 0, 2. So you'll notice the opposite happens. We have 0, a number is always the case for the y-intercept. Let's take a look at the next blank. A function is blank on an interval if the y-value increases as the x-value increases. That can be a little bit wordy. So here I'm going to generalize it. As you read a graph left to right, okay, just like we read a book, we read left to right. So I'm starting here and I'm following it over as I read left to right. When am I going up and when am I going down? So in this case, if the x and y values are both increasing, we say the function is increasing. But it's not always going up, so we have certain intervals. So here's our first interval. Maybe add some arrows to help you understand how you're reading this. So we're reading up to the right. And then we're also going up to the right from here to here. Okay, so if I look at interval notation in this particular graph, I'm going to use the same color. I'm increasing from an x value of negative infinity to an x value of negative 1. Now, why is it negative infinity? Because that graph is going on forever in the negative direction or forever left. Okay, I'm also increasing from the x value of 3 all the way, well, there's an arrow, it goes on forever. So we're going to say all the way to positive infinity. Let's look at the opposite. If I read my graph left to right, what do I have remaining is where it's decreasing. So if I read left to right, I'm decreasing as I go down to the right. Therefore, my interval 
is from a negative 1 to 3. We're using the x values there, okay? Make sure you make note of that. We want to use x values for intervals. Okay, maybe jot that down somewhere as a little reminder. Notice, if I was to piece all those intervals together, I'd have the whole graph. I'd have negative infinity to negative 1, negative 1 to 3, 3 to infinity. So I know I've covered all my bases. Increasing, decreasing can be challenging. Just always remember left to right x values. Left to right x values. Okay, let's take a look at the top right corner. The blank is the y value of the highest point in a particular region of a graph. So we'll look for all the tops of the mountains you may have heard when you were in other math classes. Um, all the top points. And we're going to call those, more specifically, maximums. So in this case, I have a maximum right here. Okay, that maximum is at negative 1, comma 4. We just write it as a point. Okay. You might have a whole bunch of maximums. You might have a bunch of tops of curves. You list them all. Okay. The next one, you probably can already guess, is the opposite. The lowest points are called the minimums. So in this case, my minimum occurs on the graph at the bottom of my curves, which is at 3, negative 4. Again, we write it as a point value. Oops, that's really bad writing there. Sorry about that. Negative 4. So maximums and minimums are all the tops and the bottoms of our curves. Take a look at the bottom right. Blank, 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 and blank are all names that describe the x value of a graph whose corresponding y value is zero. Well, that sounds familiar. Take a look at the top left corner. My y value is zero. So these are all names, meaning these are all names that can be used alongside of the name x-intercept. We can call x-intercepts zeros, roots, and solutions. We can use these terms interchangeably. So why do we have so many terms that mean the same thing? Well, it depends really on a lot of what level of math class you're in. What are you looking for in that particular math class? Am I looking to solve? Then it's going to be a solution. If I'm looking at a graph, I might refer to it more as an x-intercept. I might refer to it as a zero because the y value is zero. That's where it comes from. So just know that those can all be used interchangeably. So in this case, we look at our purple dots, and those are all our zeros, roots, solutions, and x-intercepts. Alrighty, let's take a look at an example. And this particular example you don't have to write down. Um, I just want you to follow along, use that foldable that we just filled out uh, to assist you as we talk about these concepts and these key features on a graph. Let's talk about the x-intercepts, where they cross or intercept the x-axis. Remember that in this case we should have a number followed by a zero. We can see that we cross the x-axis at these four points. So I'm going to have four points negative 4 comma 0, looks like negative 3 comma 0, looks like that's about 0. 0.5 comma 0, I have to make a little bit of an estimate there, and 3 comma 0. Let's take a look at our y-intercepts where we intercept the y-axis, therefore I should have a 0 comma a number. And I only cross once right there, so that would be at 0 comma, negative 2. Increasing intervals. Remember, we want to read the graph from left to right. Okay, and we want to use our x values to state these intervals. All right, so 
In this case, I'm going to ignore this arrow right here. Okay, we're going to read from left to right. So I'm increasing from here to here, and then I'm increasing from here to here. Let's identify those intervals. I'm increasing from negative infinity, because it's forever left, to the x value of, looks like it's about negative 3.5. I'm also increasing from this point right here. So I'm going to make a guess and say that's about negative 1.2. If you were to guess negative 1.1 or negative 1.3, I would accept that because I haven't given you any specific information. And we're increasing all the way to this point, which looks like it's for sure at 2. All right, as I read the graph left to right, I'm decreasing here and decreasing here. So I'm decreasing from negative 3.5 all the way to negative 1.2. And then I'm decreasing from 2 till forever. So till infinity, because it's the x values. Okay, don't forget, we've got to use the x values. I'm going to keep stressing that because it's a commonly, um, it's a common mistake that we all make. Maximums. Maximums are the tops of our curves. Okay, where we change direction is our maximums and minimums as well. We write these as points. So our maximum here looks to be at negative 3.5 up to, looks like probably 1 would be my y value. And then I also have a point at 2, 5. For minimum, we also write those as points. Those are the bottoms of our curves where we change direction. So in this case, it would be at about negative 1.2, comma, it looks like that y value is about negative 5.5. Take a look at these patterns. That negative 3.5 we reuse, that negative 1.2 we reuse, that 2 value we reuse. So keep track of those patterns and how they relate to each other. It'll make it a lot easier. Now as for our domain, our domain is our x values, meaning how far left to how far right. My graph goes forever left, slowly, but it's going forever left. So I would say negative infinity, the farthest left it goes. And as for right, it goes forever right, okay? Um, it, slowly, but it is going forever right. Range. Range is our y values. How low to how high. So my y values, how low do they go? Forever. So negative infinity. How high do they go? They stop. If I look at where my graph stops on the y-axis, it stops right here. So that would be a y value of 5. Notice what I'm going to do here, though. I put a bracket. Think about that. I stop at exactly 5. 5 is included into my range. So I'm going to use a bracket. Infinities are not an exact point. Therefore, we always use parentheses on our infinity values. Okay, so domain and range, be careful with how we um, use that notation. All right, for this example, I do want you to add this to your notes. Um, first, I would start by writing the function. The function is y equals x squared minus 2x minus 3. You could play around with that function in a graphing calculator if you own one, um, or you could plug it into Desmos. Uh, the online graphing calculator, that might help you visualize some of these key features a little better. So uh, just take a moment to pause the video and jot down the questions we're going to answer and do a little sketch of that graph and notice the points that are clearly identified. All right, let's start with x-intercepts where we cross the x-axis. Those are points. We cross the x-axis at negative 1, comma, 0, 
and 3 comma 0. Y intercepts, where we cross the Y axis, it looks like we cross there at 0 comma negative 3. Increasing intervals, where am I increasing, where am I decreasing? We want to read left to right, okay? I'm going to keep stressing that, left to right. So I'm going to use yellow for increasing and green for decreasing. Colors might help if you're a visual learner. As I read left to right, I start by going down. So I'm decreasing to that point. And then as I change direction, I'm increasing. So I'm increasing, remember x values, from 1 to infinity. It's going forever to the right or forever up. Decreasing. Well, I'm starting way, 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 way up there. Therefore, I'm starting at negative infinity. Again, we're going to use our x values. And I stop decreasing at 1. Let's take a look at our maximums. Where do I have a top of a curve? Ah, in this one, I don't have a top of a curve. I don't have any maximums. Okay, we only change direction once. Therefore, I'm only going to have one, either a maximum or a minimum. And in this case, I have a minimum. So we write that in point form. So my point is at 1, comma, negative 4. Let's take a look at our domain and range. Domain, how far left to how far right? Well, I go forever left, and I go forever right. You'll notice with a lot of our functions, that's going to be our domain. Don't rely on it, but it's very common. Our range is how low to how high, our y values. Low, well, I stop right at this dotted line here, which represents negative 4. Now, that negative 4 is an exact point, so I'm going to use a bracket. How far up do I go? I go forever up. Therefore, I'm going to say infinity. Um, if you are using colors, maybe, you know, I didn't do a good job of this, maybe make sure you use the same colors all the time. Um, sometimes your brain will just recognize those colors. So if that's something that helps you in notes or on test, um, you know, do what you need to do to make it work. All right, so you have your foldable for your notes. So I'm going to check to make sure that that foldable is filled out correctly. And then in your notes, you're going to have that last example. Okay. So that's what I'm going to look for to make sure that we're ready to move on. Uh, we're going to keep working on this concept. We're going to look at some more examples and we're going to work on some practice problems. Okay. If you have questions um, concerning these notes, make sure you let me know. Or if you found any mistakes, let me know because it might take me a little while to get into the swing of things. And just for fun, let's throw in a little joke here. You know, I like my cheesy math jokes. So what do you get if you divide the circumference of a jack-o'-lantern by its diameter? Well, of course, you would end up with some pumpkin pie. Figured you'd enjoy that. Have a good one. We'll see you in class.